Melita Mofokeng exactly the same thing. You've asked planning of directions and planning of the formal letter. That's very difficult for me to do if you don't give me a set of directions or a formal letter to plan for you because you know how I like to plan. I plan using a mind map. So with directions, I would actually plan like, like a porcupine, like a hedgehog. How many directions am I going to have? I actually should change color. And I would actually go one, two, three for planning directions. But what is it? Where am I going? How far am I going? And as I said, I would say, okay, let's say I'm going to do a landmark there, and that's going to be the church with the steeple. So that will be that landmark. And two will be I'm turning from First Street into Fifth Avenue. You know, whatever it is. And here maybe I need another landmark, so I will do a garage. So I'm not sure, you know, what you want. And then the planning of the formal letter is exactly the same thing. I always start with this. So a formal letter, you are, I don't know, asking for information. You are meant to draw the, the topic. So here's the person asking and the information that's going to come. So how many words do you have? If you're home language or, or FAL, look at the number of words. And then you need to say to yourself, a letter would have three paragraphs. Why would it have three paragraphs? Well, it could have more, but three is, is really very nice. So this is your introduction. And remember, in your mind, mind map, you do not write introduction. You actually start planning. And then this paragraph is your body, and it's usually the longer paragraph or the longest of the three. And then you come to your conclusion. So possibly, Melita, do you want to send me some topics that you have looked at? And preferably with your mind map, could you give me a screenshot of the, of the mind map and let me discuss how you've approached the topic and where maybe you could improve it to get from that moderate into the skillful category. Right, then Claudia, you're also on mind mapping. So we're also on planning. And you want to mind map, first of all, a CV. All right, now... I'm not sure, even with my love of mind maps, that I would mind map a CV. Remember, the CV comes with the covering letter. And you need to have a look at how many words you've got for this, depending on if you are home language or foul. Your CV, you're going to have to learn those basics that go into a CV. There are lots of examples on the net. So go onto the net and have a look. You usually start with all the personal stuff. Name, surname, ID number, address, phone numbers, languages that you speak, all of those things. That usually comes first. Then you have your record of your education. And if you are in high school, you start with primary school. Adults go back to high school. They don't go back as far as primary school. And you, you, you need to set it out. So again, just go onto the net and have a look at how CVs are set out. It's usually the date. So you say you were, I don't know, um, 2010 to 2015. Then you've got the name of the institution, so whatever, 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 tenfold school. And you usually put something like the subjects that you took. And if you've matriculated, you usually give 
your national senior certificate results. So you do your education. Then you go to experience. Now, when I set CVs at school, I never set a CV older than the child is at school. Because if I ask students to write the CV of somebody who has been an electrical engineer for 10 years, they have not a cooking clue what to write. So I really would be very careful of setting yourself up as a chartered accountant or a lawyer or something, because you just won't know what to write, seriously. So when it comes to your experience, and obviously I'm assuming here, let me just go back, under education, that we're not actually saying that you went to a university and that you have a degree. I've, I've chopped all of that. I'm assuming you're at school. Same thing with experience. Don't write experience that you don't have. So let's say in 2020, you managed, um, I don't know, a website for grade 10s. So you could put there, again, do you see, I'm sort of setting it up like this, the dates, the name of the institution, the subjects, I'm doing something similar here, the dates, what, what you did, who you worked for, actually it should probably be the institution first, there, who you worked for, and then what you did for them. But don't try to imagine stuff you don't understand. And if you haven't got experience, you haven't got experience. Then what's normal in a, a, in a CV is things like hobbies and interests. Adults will put in things like publications, you know, those kinds of things. So hobbies and interests. And then you have referees. These are people, you put the name, you put the institution, you put, possibly, actually, I think I want the institution first, the name and the person's position, and then the contact details, the CV, uh, sorry, the email, the phone numbers. And these are people that they can phone and say, hi, uh, I believe Mbali worked for you. Yes, give me the lowdown on her, what she really like. Tell me honestly. Um, yeah, but... Now, the things that go into the CV, there are lots and lots and lots of examples. I think you need to go onto the internet and start looking and look at what they put in. And know you're not expected to have a photograph in, in your exam. Very often the CV starts, let me go all the way back, um, that it starts with a little kind of, I don't know, like a little blurb, a little introduction, a little summary of who you are and what you're your goals are and what you're passionate about, and that comes first. But seriously, how do I plan this? Well, it depends on whose CV I'm being asked to write. So, again, you need to give me the question. Is it a CV of somebody that I would write quite easily? Or is it the CV of somebody I would actually battle to write? 